Yeah, yeah. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Uh, I wanted to dive into some later-ish round rookie picks right now. You know, me and Nate messed around and did a uh, a one quarterback rookie mock draft yesterday on the channel. So if you're in any one quarterback dynasty leagues, or I'd argue that those are probably even more valuable for people in super flex leagues because if you go one quarterback, obviously the skill players get pushed up. They get pushed up. So we learn a little bit more about dudes at the end of, you know, third round, early fourth round that typically wouldn't be selected if you're in a super flex draft, but you might want to keep an eye on them. So we went deep and I want to talk about three of the dudes that are flying under the radar right now as pass catchers. We have two wide receivers. We have one tight end. If you've been following along with a lot of the stuff I've been yapping about over the last month or two as we've dove into this rookie class, you've probably heard me talk a little bit about all three of these dudes, but I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into them and tell you, you know, statistically, film-wise, really go from A to Z, from one to three through these dudes uh, about why I think they should be, you know, second, third, fourth round selections for you in every rookie draft. You have two wide receivers, one tight end, one shirt tucked. BDG half zip champion collab windbreaker on sale now link will be down below do we want to zip it fully do we want to half zip it yeah we going we're going hoodie nick for this video <laughs> All right, we're putting me in the corner. We're going over to the rookie draft guide because this is where we do our best analysis pretty much. This is where all right, I feel like a fucking weirdo with that on. This is where I do my best analysis. This is where we've done most of our work on these rookies. So as we're diving into the profiles, we're just going to go through the three profiles of these guys that I actually did. I did personally and uh, and wrote them up. So you can find the rookie draft guide on bdge.co. It's the homepage. Rookie draft guide, drop down, rookie profiles. We've got Nearly every fantasy relevant rookie here uh, filtered by their names. And then if you want to break it down by position, first dude, we're going to start off with, you know, I can't stop talking about Mr. Tyler Scott. Every player has a profile like this. We've got their bio. We've got their percentiles for their combine stuff. We've got their positional rank, their super flex rank, their one quarterback rank. We've got our full rankings in here as well that you'll be able to see on this drop down. We've got a player comp for every player. We've got their stats, whatever, whatever. But the the meats of this chicken wang, of the Tyler Scott chicken wing, is on the bottom where we have these different tabs that we go and really tell you the story of each player's collegiate profile from start to finish, looking only at film, then looking only at their advanced analytics and stats, and then looking at their combine performance, trying to wrap it all together, and then the fantasy outlook will be updated as soon as the NFL draft happens. So we tell you, you know, this is where you should be targeting them in rookie drafts, this is where you should be start, uh, targeting them in dynasty startup drafts. This uh, chunk of change will be accounted for, again, after the NFL draft at the end of April. These write-ups... Um, the profiles have been split between myself, Noah, and Corey over at Fantasy Stock Exchange. Us three have done all the write-ups for the 60, 65 fantasy players that are relevant in this year's rookie class. So I'm not going to read you the whole thing here of the film breakdowns, but you guys can pretty much... Basically, you're getting three profiles for free today. But you can expect this for basically every player in here. I'll try to bite-size it and make it into a nice digestible video for y'all. So the first thing that I came across... I started... Like, I really liked Tyler Scott when I was watching his film. So I was like, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. You know, why didn't he break out a little earlier? Whatever, whatever. Three-year player, early declare. He didn't start playing the wide receiver position until he stepped on campus as a freshman. He was a running back in high school, and then he swapped positions. A player he watches the most tape of, who he styles his game after, is Terry McLaurin. So when we're looking at the stats, you know, you see his freshman year, 2020. That's also the COVID year. Three catches, four targets. The next year is when he really breaks out, right? His, his second year actually playing wide receiver, 30 catches, turns that into 520 yards, five touchdowns. 17.3 yards per reception. His junior year is where he really goes bananas. 88 targets, 55 catches in 11 games, nine touchdowns, 904 yards. So he keeps up that high yard per reception number. He is a downfield playmaker like Tyler Lockett. Smooth operator. Lance Zerline gave him one of the highest receiver grades in this entire class on NFL.com, which is really where I was introduced to him because I, I had seen some guys that I trust in the industry talk about this player and I hadn't seen a lot of people in the fantasy industry talk about Tyler Scott so I see you know someone like Lance Erline who knows what the fuck he's doing put Tyler Scott all the way atop the board and I'm like I really got to dive into this kid fluid hips 
like silky smooth double moves downfield. And for someone his size, right? He came in the combine. I think he is 5'11", 185. So even better size than I imagined he would be when he came into the combine. He really, really has that dog, man. The x-rays will prove that. He plays bigger than his size. Excellent ball skills. And one of the other things I can't emphasize enough, it's like you might look at his stats and be a little bit underwhelmed, but I could tell you last year, I don't know who he played with that quarterback after Desmond Ritter. God damn, this was a bar by me. I'm just going to read this sentence. I don't know who played quarterback at Cincy in 2022 following the departure of third-round draft pick Desmond Ritter, but I could tell you that he ain't getting drafted unless there's another world war. Sometimes I don't even know what I write when I write. Like I kind of just black out and do it, and I look back, and I'm like, damn, that shit was kind of feisty. So the next thing I do is I wanted to chop up a game because I'm watching the game, and I'm like, man, this dude could have an extra 7,000 yards if, if, like, if the quarterback play was even halfway decent. So here's a single game versus Arkansas in which the Bearcats passer left nearly 6 for 175 and 2 on the field for Scott. Let's just watch this sheesh. This is a clip that I chopped up from one single game last year. Cool, let's just airmail it into another fucking county. Wide open down the field. Now listen, it wasn't like anything special by Scott. It was a very uh, Jalen Hyatt-esque sheesh going on there. Let's airmail it again. Boom. Beats the defender by fucking three yards. Tyler Scott, let's try this again. Let's not. Let's be off communication. Tyler Scott, let's throw it fucking eight yards over his head on a simple out route. Boom. Oh my goodness, the double move was... All right, he probably could have came down with that. I ain't going to lie. Just look at this double move by him. He's on the outside here. Just watch this double move to get open over here. Boosh. I wish they fucking zoned in on him. Now, the throw comes in. Yeah, he probably could have came up with this, but he's full extension up, hits the fingertips. He's off the ground pretty fucking high, so you know what? Maybe bad throw, maybe could have caught the ball, but it is what it is. Tyler Scott, another one downfield. Let's see. He's open by like six yards, and then he's overthrown by six yards. Maybe this dude does have like an incredibly strong arm because for Tyler Scott to be open by four yards and then overthrown at the same time by four yards. So he's overthrown on like six deep passes in this game. But this is where Tyler Scott just absolutely dominates down the field, and he's just always four yards past the guy that he is that's covering him. So, you know, most college receivers don't see six targets a game, but here's Scott getting six targets a game that don't even come close to him. I will say, like, the one the one thing that I was concerned with watching Tyler Scott's tape were the hands. That sometimes he, there are some points where he just has random ass drops, where the ball does hit his hands, focus drops. I think that's something that can be taught, I think, with more experience coming as a wide receiver. Again, didn't play wide receiver at all until he stepped on the field for Cincinnati. Let's dive into the stats a little bit. So, again, I can't overstate the fact that he didn't play wide receiver and he still ends up being an early declare for the NFL draft. Didn't have to stay there for four years to refine his craft and get top 50, top 60 buzz from dudes like Lance Zerline and real player, real people around the NFL. By year three, Scott was Cincinnati's passing offense. 41% dominator rating ranks in the 85th percentile. Commanded nearly 25% of the team's total targets. And just because he's slightly undersized, which after the combine, he's not. 5'11", 185, whatever. Kid strictly operates on the boundaries. Man, press zone didn't matter. 97% of his routes came outside the hashes. So it's not a guy who's going to be playing slot exclusively. Not even close. We're just going to read this paragraph. Scott's final year numbers weren't scroll stopping, but with better luck, they would have been. And because of it, you're going to get a massive discount on this kid in rookie drafts. As I broke down in the film section, the Bearcats quarterback in 2022 was an embarrassment. And whoever he was left another 300 plus yards and three to four scores on the field just in that game, but pretty much, you know, for the year or whatever. You could tack that onto his stats because of horrid execution. He was an embarrassment to me personally. The fact that I had to watch him in order to watch Scott, Tyler Scott, just pissed me off. It's like when you go to the beach and you park your car and you decide to leave your shoes in the trunk because you're like, fuck it, I just want to go barefoot. That's when I feel my best. And then you realize at the parking lot you need to walk across in order to get to the sand is scorching hot, filled with loose, jagged rocks. In this situation, Tyler Scott is the sand and uh, and his quarterback is the parking lot. So I think we're officially going to re-nickname Tyler Scott the Sandman. Uh, Scott also dealt with an ankle sprain that he suffered versus USF that cost him two games and hindered him in, an, uh, in another two games. So the stats, again, could have been better. And I actually think in an alternative universe, an 80th percentile outcome junior year concludes in Scott leading the NCAA in receiving yards. There wasn't an NCAA receiver that had a ton of yards. I think that the leader in the NCAA had like 1,350 or 1,400 yards tops. So I think Scott, not injured and maybe fucking actually hit on the hands with a few of his passes, goes bonkers this year. I think it's also telling that Scott continued to improve despite losing an NFL 
NFL caliber quarterback. Uh, guy's an absolute fucking menace. He has scored 10 of his 14 career touchdowns from 30 plus yards out, 16.6 yards per reception, 24th in the country. And pleasantly surprised because I didn't see it on film. He's fast and he's an athlete. Um, and he did play running back, so maybe this shouldn't surprise me. But his broken or missed tackles forced per reception, 0.26, ranked 39th among 200 qualified wide receivers. The drop rate, though, 11.3%, 38th worst in college football. So that's the biggest flaw. But everything else just feels like he is. I've watched many interviews with this kid. He is extremely humble, extremely hardworking, loves football, well-spoken, int intellectual. Like, this kid's going to continue to get really, 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 really good at the game. He's a dude that you want on every one of your rookie drafts. Look at the combine. Ran a 4-4. 4, 4, 83rd percentile. His jumps were in the 93rd percentile at minimums. Broad jump, 98th percentile. The kid crushed. The kid fucking crushed. Okay? Stats, film, combine, athleticism. It's all there. Please do not let this kid slip into the third round of your rookie drafts. Move over to the next pass catcher. We have Parker Washington. He is a slot wide receiver out of Penn State. Not getting really any recognition here. We have, you know, Penn State is like low-key wide receiver you. Just the number of pass catchers that they produce, Chris Godwin, Al Robinson, Jahan Dotson, KJ Hamler, Pat Fryermuth, Mike Kosicki, like NFL-level talent, man. Parker Washington is a uh, a different type of fit. I would say he's most like Chris Godwin in this group of players, but not really like Chris Godwin. He's got the thick frame. He's got the running back type frame. I think he was 5'9", 205. He didn't actually perform at the combine, but to be honest with you, I didn't really need it because I saw what I needed to see on film and I know the type of player is he's a very distinct type of player right he's not uh he's kind of like Juju when he came into the league right he had these big statistical seasons we thought he was gonna be wide receiver one turns out he's just awesome at finding slots in the zone coverage dominating as a slack guy get the ball in his hands and let him make plays that is what Parker Washington does not going to be an outside guy not separating versus man and press coverage but He's amazing over the middle. This, the guy does not drop balls, even when the shit is like this. Even when Sean Clifford is throwing like Clifford the big fucking red dog, Parker Washington is coming down with it. He makes plays like this. You, He is like a Debo Samuel, a golden type, Tate type beat player. Um, you're not going to ask him to line up outside and beat press coverage. You're just not going to do that. But what you're going to do is set him up for plays like this. Let's see the first one. Catch a slant over the middle and embarrass multiple defenders. This is an ugly looking play. Ugly looking film. I'm fucking filming at 540p. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so he's over the middle right here. He's going to fucking rack up this quick slant. Say, hold these. Get off me, snitch. End zone visit. I want to go back to that, though. I want you to see that catch. He runs his slant in, boom, creates some separation, gets his hips low. And that cat, watch his catch. Full hands. Like, that's a tough play. It's a low throw, really extended, just straight hands catch out there. And while he's, like, in the midst of trying to regain his balance from, like, shifting his hands out so far, he sees this defender right here one-on-one. -on -one. He said, nope. Hold them. Takes it to the cribbo. It's just a beautiful play to encapsulate who he is. Catches a hospital ball that leads him to visiting oncoming defenders in their hospital bed after the game. That could have been worded better. I'm not exactly a wordsmith. Let me put it that way. Nope. Be quiet. Shut your whole ass up all right play number two so he's out here on the outside they set up a screen for him i believe yeah there you go quick screen slantish you see two guys here this dude should have sent him into next week instead he said yes sir that's what i did to your mama that's what i did to your mama too i'm gonna visit pay dirt and then pay for your mama's mortgage that's what p walsh just said dude good looking dude too Let's watch that again in real time. Boy. My noggin, my brain is way bigger than yours. Crib call. And what's this last one? Fuck it, let the man cook on the sideline. All right, love letting the chef cook. What we got here? Ooh, full extension on it. Boy. These are the types of plays he makes, man. The ball skills are crazy for his size and his body type. Like, that's a different play than the one, you know, I just showed you in this picture. But those are the types of plays he makes all the time. So I really like this kid's game if he's put in the right, you know, spot to succeed. Like, this is a player that you look at him and you go, hey, we need to fill this slot in our offense. He's not just like a pure talent that you say. Like, his worst skills are for sure his separation skills. When he's on the outside, when he's facing man, press coverage, he's not going to, you know, he's not going to get that going. He's also just 20 years old. So he's got time to develop these skills. And I think, like, his ceiling can absolutely 
be taken to the next floor up if developed correctly. When we look at the stats, man, I mean, again, 20 years old, had to compete with Jahan Dotson, Pat Frymuth as a true freshman, still posted four catches and 54 receiving yards per game and scored six times as a true freshman. But yeah, most of the numbers just kind of back up what I've said before. Not a downfield playmaker, at least not at a highly consistent level. Among 285 qualified NCAA receivers this year with at least 10 deep targets, Washington's 15.2% deep, deep target rate ranked 257th his yards per out run while not poor versus man coverage takes a notable dip relative to his success against zone coverage zone coverage is 2.47 man coverage 2.10 and again you know that's what we expect from a dude who runs 71.2 percent of his routes from the slots once you get the ball in his hands which is basically every time he gets thrown the ball two percent drop rate two percent drop rate surgeon mams out there uh, a nightmare for defensive backs pff has him at 033 Missed tackles forced per reception. Sports Info Solutions backs it up a .35. Top 12 in the country. Again, he does not drop passes, and when he gets the ball in his hands, which is every time he's throwing the ball, he makes guys miss at a very high rate. And similar to Josh Downs, man, uh, he's got the dog. He's got that dog. He might be undersized. He might be a little bit undersized, but he ranks second in this class. 71.4% contested catch rate right below Mr. Josh Downs, who we all love out of UNC. Again, didn't perform at the Combine, so we got to wait for the Pro Day. But statistically and everything I saw on film, I think Parker Washington is one of the most under... You can get him in like the fourth round of rookie drafts. He's one of my favorite fourth round picks right now in this year. And we'll move over to the last pass catcher on the list. As I promised, one tight end. We have Mr. Sam Leporta, who, as you could see, crushed the Combine. We've got to update the height and weight there. Sam Leporta, he's a four-year player out at Iowa. Put up. Big statistical numbers in both his junior and senior year. And when we've gotten to the film breakdown, I think like he just does everything really well. He's not a dude who's super flashy. You don't watch the film. It's not like Dalton Kincaid where you're like, holy shit, this guy kind of looks like a wide receiver. But he also kind of does look like a wide receiver. So this is Sam Laporta right here in the middle. He looks like a he kind of just looks like a giant wide receiver a little bit like the way he stands even is very not like tight end esque. it looks like Alan Lazard like a big version of him so these are two plays back to back where he makes really really tough contested catches second one being wild something simple boom tough catch good extension you know just good ball skills watch it again from a different angle it's a good play. Like, you can see even if from the second angle, it's even better because the ball's thrown behind him a little bit, right? Like, linebacker easily could have got his hand in, and it kind of did. Laporta had the concentration to just make that play and still bring it in. Second throw, this is awesome. We're just going to watch this in real time, and then we'll have the replay of it. This is the very next play. <sighs> Boom. I actually zoomed in there a little bit for you all. Mm. In between two defenders, like above his head, knows he's about to get smashed, still comes up with a play. 84, right over the middle, right here. Goes behind the guy. He knows that if he goes in front of him, the guy's going to follow him along that route. If he goes behind him, he kind of loses sight of him, and this guy just picks up everything in front of him. So he knows he has the wherewithal to go behind him, hit this zone in the middle here. Boom. Look how difficult that is. Watch this in real time. Skirt. Oof. What a fucking catch. Boy. Sam Laporta, man. That's what he's doing out here. I don't necessarily know that Laporta has the upside of, like, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle coming out of Iowa. Maybe he does. You know, Iowa's fucking tight end you over here. George Kittle, Noah Fan, TJ Hawkinson. I think in most classes, Sam Laporta would be the tight end two or three. And I think a lot of people are going to have him as, you know, close to that if he gets good draft capital. Because he went to the combine and absolutely ripped this fucking place up. 90th percentile on pretty much everything, right? So he, he comes in, weighs in at 6'3", 245, runs a 4'5", 40 yard dash. 4'5", When tight ends start breaking in the four fives that's when you take the pants off vert jump 86 percentile broad jump went crazy three cone went crazy that's it right there we start diving into the stats he basically led iowa in receiving i said basically so i don't i think he was second in 2020 but 2021 2022 he was their guy only michael mayer and don kincaid saw more targets than him last year he had the fourth most catches in college football despite playing two fewer games with an a dot of 7.1 he was still able to turn out that sixth highest yard per route run mark in the country thanks in large part to his 32.8 percent broken plus missed 
tackles forced per reception, fourth highest in the NCAA. He has a problem with the ball in his hands. I will say, though, the A dot's kind of surprising of 7.1. It's not a high number, right? The average depth of target, 7.1, because he lined up outside as a receiver on 20.2% of his snaps, which was the single highest rate in the NCAA among tight ends, right? He never came off the field. He uh, he was running routes on 93.5% of their plays. Only one tight end in college football ran a route on a higher percentage of their team's plays. So he has a lot of experience outside. One thing I will say, um, I was surprised when I dove a little bit deeper into the numbers because his contested catch rate was 38.5%. Uh, that doesn't rate, that doesn't rank great. Uh, because when you watch him on tape, he makes a lot of those plays. And maybe I just missed a couple of the games in which he dropped those. Uh, but he did have a few focus drops. 9.4% drop rate, which was the 13th worst in the NCAA among tight ends. And some of those just might have ended up being the contested catches in the games I didn't film so or the games I didn't watch. So that might have been a double-edged sword there. Uh, all in all, Laporta's numbers are far better than they are worse. And it backs up most of what I saw in film. Again, you pair that with a, a stellar combine. So now you have receiving production at the college level. You have really good stats tell you that he makes plays with the ball in his hands, can catch the ball, whatever. And then the combine, just like the athleticism, kind of points to his upside. So at 245 pounds, cracking a 4, 5, 9, 40-yard dash is crazy. So he should be a top 50 pick, and he should start to go way closer to where the other tight ends in the top tier of this class are going right now, which is, you know, middle, second, late second, early third. He's probably the best value at tight end in the entire class right now. Sam Laporta out of Iowa. So those are three dudes I absolutely love in this year's class if you have third fourth round picks that you know you need to use soon i'm assuming most of these guys will get pretty good draft capital and be zooted up boards by the time may comes and you have your rookie drafts but we'll help prepare you for that as well as we said in the rookie draft guide we've got the fantasy outlook tab and everyone's profile which we will be updating immediately after the nfl draft to tell you what to do with these guys in their rookie drafts and in your dynasty startup drafts so go check out the rookie draft guide you can go cop it on bdge.co tyler scott parker washington sam laporta three of my most favorite my favoriteist underrated pass catchers in this class let me know down below in the comment section who you guys uh think is super underrated in this class i know i've heard a lot of trey palmers heard a lot of guys like that which i've watched a tape on it's, it's okay but yeah that's it i'm out of here i love y'all and i'll see you uh tomorrow friday i don't know i don't fool you know.